Greetings everyone, good morning. I am the Moon Mama and I wanted to come in and just talk about a little bit of the astrology and how it's showing up in the world right now and how we can, we're all participating in it, but how we can consciously participate by fully taking responsibility for the world that we are perceiving. So um, a few days ago, A few days ago, Mars in Libra squared Pluto in the last degrees of Aquarius. Uh, I'm not the last degrees of Aquarius, but the last degrees of Capricorn. Pluto has been in Capricorn since 20, 2007 when we first had the bank crashes and the economic crash in America. Um, and Capricorn is authority, it's the government, it's the systems that are put in place that regulate the current world that we're in. And Pluto is the underlord, the destroyer. So basically the things that we have given authority to outside of ourselves, you know, simple things like doctors, teachers, elected officials, um, religious people, parents, the ways that we have assigned our authority to another through conditioning and cultural agreements is coming to an end. Now Cap Pluto is in the final stages, the final degrees of Capricorn has been for several years, but it's now going to be turning direct in the next few days and moving into Aquarius. And when it moves into Aquarius, I don't know if it's ever coming back to Capricorn again. So. Pluto in Aquarius is the time of revolution for freedom, for us to become, come back into our own authority. Now, when you put Mars in Libra, which is about our, the mirror, our relationship to the other, and you square that with Pluto, it means that we become at war with the current, the current structures of authority. And so now we see this war happening in, um, in the Middle East, right? And so the thing that's really important to know right now is that nothing is outside of us. The reason we have this war and these things happening, it's happening astrologically. And for those of you who have done readings with me and you've sat with me and you've watched me read your life by just reading the astrological um, placements, it's no different than it is now. So what really is happening is that we are at war with ourselves. We are at war with the old part of ourselves that no longer wants to give our authority away to some sort of external force. And that war brings us back to the truth of power, which is that everything is inside. Um, Libra governs, Mars was in Libra. Libra is the mirror. It is the other. So we see where we are at war with ourselves to bring our power back. Also, the North Node is in Aries. The North Node in Aries. Aries is the warrior. And the warrior is about yourself. It's about having your power. So the, the North Node is going to be in Aries for the next about 16 months now because it's, it's about 18 month process and we're about to we're in eclipse season so the eclipses are going to happen in libra which is where we had this mars retro this mars where we had the mars where mars is in a square with capricorn pluto and capricorn and the sun and the south node is currently in libra so the south node means that we're letting go we're releasing our attachment to the other so your current relationship structures the way you've shown up in relationships i know for me personally i would show up in relationships not understanding my power thinking that i needed somebody to be something that i wasn't thinking that i wasn't enough for whatever it was based upon um, family patterns and karma and all of that sort of stuff. But those old karmic patterns are beginning to dissolve based upon where you are in your own relationship to yourself. 
And the question is, can you take responsibility for everything going on in your life? Because everything comes from you. You are the creator and generator of your world based upon your thoughts. So if you believe that somebody is doing something to you, I always say to my clients who are women, you know, if you have a partner and he's being dishonest or lying to you, where are you being dishonest with yourself? Where are you lying to yourself? Where are you not understanding your own value? If you are in relationships, not just romantic, work partnerships, family partnerships, any relationships where you are not, where you feel like you are being taken advantage of, you have to ask yourself, where am I generating that from within myself? There is no external thing, you all. And when we begin to experience it externally, the only reason we're experiencing it externally is because we did not catch it when it was inside of us. We couldn't name it inside, so it had to show up externally so you could see it because you are so externally focused when we're externally focused and we're not doing the internal work to take responsibility when we don't have the strength to see ourselves honestly for who we really are and our powerful creations when we don't have the strength to do that the universe shows it to you outside of yourself so that you can then be whipped by it until you take responsibility for it now many of us it's important to know that we're in the dark ages you guys we are ending the last stages of the dark ages so this work is rigorous this work is not for the faint of heart you cannot be someone who is calling someone else's name because of something that you're experiencing you have to know that your feelings are all yours and for last year when the sun went in the scorpio last year and it was at the last stages of the south node in scorpio i felt myself go into the depths of my own shadow into my own underworld to see where i was attached to external things attached to relationships attached to people you know, i'm sorry there's a a lot going on and so what i i got to see it like i had been a, a while ago i was married and i started to see really clearly where i was still attached to the need for approval from an external force and many of us are looking for external things to validate who we are inside of ourselves we're looking to mo for money to do it we're looking for accolades to do it we're looking for things externally to happen in order to make us feel good about who we are internally and it will never work that way that is just not how this reality works so we have this opportunity right now while we are in eclipse season to begin to do the internal work and hopefully you're not just beginning because if you're just beginning you know great it's always good to begin whenever you begin but it's a lot of work so what you want to begin to do is set intentions for you to see yourself clearly to see yourself as you truly are with eyes of compassion and love and acceptance and curiosity you know so i've been looking at the parts of myself that feel unworthy that feel like you know i need somebody else or i need something else or it's it's out there i have to look at that part of myself i've been looking at the part of myself that has been looking for validation externally for me to feel good about myself for me to feel valuable and worthy i've been looking at the part of myself that i'm afraid to see the things about me that you know the fear that i carry from the trauma of my ancestors that's just in there running because it's there because i inherited looking at it and asking myself 
what is this and why is it here and how does it serve and is there what can i do to transmute it looking at the part of myself that is afraid to speak my truth and be who i'm really meant to be afraid to be my authentic self looking at the part of myself that doesn't want to stand out that doesn't want to be seen as different because we are moving into the age of aquarius and the age of aquarius is nothing but your ability to be true to yourself and be authentic and stand out so what I have learned is that this is about consistent practice. It's not an all or nothing thing. It is a journey. And so I have created courses at Follow the Sun. Right now we're running Goddess Technology. We're running 13 Moons and we're doing the work and we're planning other courses. So those of you guys who are not there, you're really missing out because I offer free courses to the community that are really empowering to help us really step into our divine power our nature of the divine within us because you have to understand that there is no divinity outside of you you are it and so if you don't understand yourself as that power then you have work to do and it's great work it's beautiful work it's challenging work because we're undoing a millennia of shadows and trauma and generational experiences that are coded in our DNA. But the evidence shows up when you begin to do it, when you begin to unravel those patterns that you inherited from your mother. I am un unraveling on a pattern of my mother um, devoting herself to men and sacrificing herself to men because she didn't feel like enough for herself she didn't feel like she could provide for herself enough so she would lay herself at the feet of men and for them to take care of her so i had to undo that pattern in myself i had to look at it closely and see where i was doing it in my own life and tell myself the truth I couldn't deny myself. I couldn't skip over it. I couldn't name it something else. I had to name it what it was and then feel it, deeply feel into it. And many of these patterns are anchored in our subconscious. And when they're anchored in the subconscious, you can, it's, it's not just yours. It's your mother's, it's your grandmother's, it's your father's, it's your grandfather's. And those energies must be recalibrated. I'm sorry, this is very noisy. Those energies must be recalibrated in our own in our own chakra system, your root chakra, your sacral chakra, your solar plex chakra, your heart chakra, your throat chakra, your first eye chakra, which they call the third eye chakra, but it's the first eye, and your crown chakra. This is how we get into our body and recalibrate these hormonal energetic systems into a current frequency that will lead us into authentic ways of being and it's important that you are willing to love yourself unconditionally i heard somebody the other day on tiktok saying there's no such thing as unconditional love and i just felt sorry i just was like wow that's too bad that they don't understand that because unconditional love is a real medicine for yourself when I was, you know, as I've been doing my work and finding like the other day, I was like, why am I like you guys might see me and think that it's easy for me to speak the truth. But actually, I speak the truth that it's easy for me to speak. But there are lots of things that I'm not saying. And and as I've been doing this work as a healer and as a reader and as a high priestess, I'm learning that I have to get really comfortable with saying things that are uncomfortable. For myself as a truth sayer, as a truth seeker, but also in service to my clients. I have to be willing to tell them exactly what I am seeing. So because many people are so afraid to see who they really are, they are looking to people like myself to help them see it, to help them see because it's because to name it, especially if it's a generational pattern especially if it's something that you're carrying that your great great grandmother gave to you you might not really be able to name it but it's running you it's running you and it, it could be 
diabetes and high blood pressure, erectile dysfunction. All of these are diseases that are inherited through our bloodline that when gone untransmuted show up in our bodies. And so it's my work to assist people in seeing what they can't see. And we've been given all of these conditions to narrate these things in ways that are not accurate to our wholeness and to our healing. And so I've had to do the work to heal my throat chakra, to heal my own root chakra, so that I could feel safe and secure in this earth realm, to speak the truth that the universe spirit through my crown chakra is dropping into my body, into my system. So I have to be able to name it. So I have to get out of my own way and look at my own shadow. And I've been able to look at my own fear of saying hard things. I've been able to look at the embarrassment that I carry that comes through my generation. And some of it is just being a Virgo because Virgos are so, the energy of Virgo is so picky. It's so perfection driven. And so because I was born into an environment that was so heavy with despair and suffering as a Virgo and, and I couldn't fix it right away, it just, um, it just imposed a greater level of shame upon me and embarrassment for not being able to fix it when I was a little girl looking into the world and seeing what black people were going through and that I was a black person, it created embarrassment inside of me that I felt like I'm a part of this class that gets, um, that gets tortured for being who we are. So I, so my psyche created embarrassment around that. And that's, that was just my, my, my ego's response to it. Right. But I've had to do the work to then unravel that to release myself from that so that I could free myself to be my authentic self. All of us have work to do similar like this. Maybe you might not have as much to do as I've had to do, so be it, but we all have it because we're here at this time. So what I want you guys to know is that the world is going to get very dark right now. This Mars in a square with Pluto means that we are about to come, the underbelly is, it's already been getting dark and it's going to get more violent. But the question is, what frequency are you holding and where are you putting your attention? And if you are doing the work to love your own darkness, to love your own shadow, to understand it, to master it, to alchemize it, if you're doing the work to do that, then you will be the place where heaven gets to come on board. You will be the embodiment of heaven on earth, but it takes consistency, it takes sincere desire, it takes open heartedness, it takes lightheartedness, it takes being as a child. Hey, Ray. <laughs> It takes being as a child so that you can embody the new codes, so that you can be the new wine skins for new wine, so that you can be the one who is able to be with all the aspects of yourself. Because remember, this 3D reality is all about reflection. So the people that show up are reflecting some aspects of ourselves. I've been watching this show on Amazon called The Chosen. Whew, and it's really deep. It's about the story known that the story of Jesus is a metaphor. I have never believed that Jesus Christ was my Lord and Savior or even walked this planet. And I don't even know that that matters because what I know is that every story and metaphor is really about me. The stories are about you. The story of Jesus is about you. The story of Mary is about you. All of these aspects live inside of us. And when Christianity came along and named, you know, um, named it paganism, it's not paganism. It's the practice of oneness, that we're one with the plants. We're one with the animals. We're one with all of the energies of the universe because we are. We're one with all of it. And so when you can recognize the oneness of it, then you have the ability to truly practice compassion. And as I'm watching this story, this metaphor, this mythological narrative about this this character called Jesus that we have made a real person. What I, what I witnessed though, what I take from it is so beautiful because the, the character 
is embracing of all. And, you know, and I was, uh, as I've been watching it, I've been praying and asking, what is it that I really need to get from this? And that he was able, you know, he went to be with the drug, the drug addicts, the sick, the, the, the tax, the taxers. He went to be with the people that were ousted in cultural society, the people that no one would sit with or embrace. He went to be with those who were condemned as unworthy. And so that's what you have to do. You have to be with the parts of yourself that you condemn as unworthy. That is the message of Christ, to be with the parts of yourself that you would think are unworthy. And so for me, as a child, I had a ton of sexual energy because my mother was a prostitute. My grandmother was damn near a prostitute. So I got, I became very ashamed of my own sexual nature because of the way it was managed in the culture. You know, if you, if you were, you, I was told I was fast and I would get a lot of attention from men and everything was sexualized. But now I've had to be with that inside of myself and understand that as a child, I was innocent. I was just doing what the adults were showing me and how could I be different if that's the environment I was in. So now I understand my innocence. I understand that I get to reclaim my innocent nature, my curious spirit, my feminine nature, right? I get to reclaim that and take it back from these pornographic ideas of, of, you know, little girls and little boys being overly sexualized. That's what the culture does, right? And so we have to claim our innocence back and nobody can do it but you. No one can do it but you. I cannot do this for you. I can read your chart for you. I can teach you all of the technologies that I have that have I've given birth through me that can, that have assisted me. I can point you to the best teachers. I can do all of those things, but you still have to do the work. And the work is yours to do and the evidence of you doing the work will be profound transformation in your mind, body, and spirit. I have healed my body in ways that I didn't understand. And it is important that we understand that the universe provides all sorts of herbal medicines and nature's wisdom to help us realign ourselves with our cosmic nature. It's not too late. It can be done. You have everything you need to do it. And there are simple things that I do. I, you know, it's like many of us have to break our attachments and those attachments are like parasites in our system. It's a real thing to have attachments. And so we have to break those attachments. I had attachments to lovers. You know, I had lovers who really met me in that woundedness and I was attached to them. So I had to break those attachments by loving myself, loving the part of myself that had attached myself to vampiric energy. So I had to give myself what I needed. Fasting, praying, you know, meditating, dancing, nature, like eating healthy. And it's a process. It doesn't happen all at once. It is a journey. It is a gentle journey. It doesn't have to annihilate you. It can support you gracefully into a new way of being. But it's your work to do. No one can do it for you. So if you guys are interested, you can join Follow the Sun. Um, there's a free link where you can join follow the sun if you're interested in getting natal chart readings you can book natal chart readings it is my i am here as a steward i am here as a support i am here as a high priestess to assist myself and others who are ready to claim their power back especially women because when women claim their power we change the world because we are the generators of reality meaning that the world comes through the vessel of a woman meaning every every person you give birth to goes out into the world and creates something your thoughts are creating the world your feelings are creating the world so you have to learn how to manage them you have to learn how to harness them in ways that are aligned to who you are authentically and you have to learn how to master your own darkness we all have it we all have darkness so as we watch the world turn into a petal of ashes, 
begin to ask yourself, how can I be what I am meant to be at this time to do the work that I am here to do? How can I love myself unconditionally? How can I step into my power? And it's a beautiful time to be alive. It really is. And you have to transmute your fear, transmute all of that chaos into a new frequency. Peace and blessings, you all. I love you. Have a really beautiful Monday. Bye-bye.